Welcome to Week 5, Chapter 2, Compliance, Law, and Ethics. The learning objectives for this chapter are to differentiate between law and ethics, describe ethical foundations and approaches, identify major national and international laws, discuss current laws, regulations, and relevant professional organizations. InfoSec and the Law by educating employees and management about their legal and ethical obligations and the proper use of information technology and information security, security professionals can keep an organization focused on its primary objective. All management, specifically InfoSec professionals, are expected to act in compliance with legal requirements when collecting, storing, and using information. Here you see the types of law constitutional, statutory, regulatory or administrative, and common law or case law or precedent. Civil law includes contract law, employment law, family law, and tort law. Tort law is a subset of the civil law that allows individuals to seek redress in event of personal, physical, or financial injury, where criminal law addresses statutes associated with traffic law, public order, property damage, and other personal damage. Private law encompasses family law, commercial law, and labor law. Public law includes criminal law, administrative law, and constitutional law. Here you see a list of relevant U.S. laws. Laws continued. And as you see, there is a lot of U.S. laws. Notice there's a Can Spam Act and a Spam Law. Notice the top law in the Federal Information Security Modernization Act. You'll hear this term often in certification and accreditation. This law was amended in October 1996 by the National Information Infrastructure Protection Act of 1996. Uh, this, that modified several sections of the previous act and increased the penalties for select crimes. The U.S. Patriot Act of 2001 was updated and extended, in many cases permanently through the U.S. Patriot Improvement and Reauthorization Act of 2005. The controversy over Section 215 which allowed the National Security Agency to collect metadata, resulted in a transfer of the responsibility for collecting and reporting this information to the telecommunication companies as part of the U.S. Freedom Act, uniting and strengthening America by fulfilling rights and ending eavesdropping, dragnet collection, and online monitoring acts. Another provision requires mandatory periodic training in computer security awareness and accepted computer security practice for all users of federal computer systems. General computer crime laws. Note that the National Bureau of Standards was renamed to NIST. We've talked about NIST publications in weeks 2, 3, and 4. Privacy in this context is not absolute freedom from observation rather is defined as the state of being free from unsanctioned intrusion. Three statutes work in cooperation with the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which prohibits search and seizure without a warrant. With HIPAA, it also requires a comprehensive assessment of the organization's information security systems, policies, and procedures. HIPAA provides guidelines for the use of electronic signatures based on security standards, ensuring message integrity, user authorization, and non-repudiation. Note the five fundamental privacy principles. Enacted in 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARRA, was designed to provide a response to economic crisis in the United States where the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, part of the IARA, was in cooperation with HIPAA and also requires that 
Entities notify information owners of breaches. This act also ensures that privacy policies in effect in the organization are fully disclosed when a customer initiates a business relationship and distributed at least annually for the duration of the professional association. Export and Espionage Laws Note that the EEA was created in 1996 and protects trade secrets. Note that the Security and Freedom Through Encryption Act of 1997 reinforces an individual's right to use or sell encryption algorithms without concern for the impact of other regulations requiring some form of key registration. In U.S. copyright law, proper acknowledgement must be provided to the author and or copyright holder of such works, including description of the location of source materials, by using a recognized form of citation. Think about the APA formatted papers you write. The reference page provides a reference to the copyrighted material or author, and in-text citation shows where you use that information in your paper. Each state has its own public access laws that should be consulted for access to state and local records under the Freedom of Information Act. Concerning the SOX Act of 2002, as these executives attempt to ensure that the systems used to record and report are sound, often relying upon the expertise of CIOs and CISOs to do so. The related areas of availability and confidentiality are also emphasized. Although the United States currently does not have a national breach law, several bills and proposals are being reviewed by U.S. Congress. The current standard for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, or PCI DSS, is 3.1 and is presented in the PCI Security Standards Council as they are focusing on 12 requirements in six areas. The secure network and systems development and maintenance, cardholder data protection, vulnerability management program maintenance, strong access control measure implementation, network monitoring and testing, and information security policy maintenance. The PCI Security Standards Council lists the following benefits of PCI DSS compliance, which include the assertion that systems processing payment cards are secure. I'm sure in the last five years you can find multiple articles where there have been breaches of credit card information. Note also that improved reputation is important, but more that compliance with other security standards such as HIPAA, SOX, and GOB are provided through PCI DSS. Because of the political complexities of the relationships among nations and cultural differences, there are currently few international laws relating to privacy and information security. The Convention also attempts to improve the effectiveness of international investigations into breaches of technology law. While the European Union created the Directive 9546EC, Note that the United Kingdom has already implemented a version of this directive called the Database Rights. The Australia High Tech Crime Law specifically includes data system intrusions such as hacking, unauthorized destruction or modification of data, actions intended to deny service of computer systems to intended users such as a denial of service or a distributed denial of service attack using botnets, and the creation and distribution of malicious software. For state and local regulation, the Georgia Identity Theft Law requires that a business may not discard a record containing personal information unless it shreds, erases, modifies, or otherwise makes the information irretrievable. The key difference between policy and law is that ignorance of policy is an acceptable defense, where ignorance of the law is not. Ethics and InfoSec. Those employed in the area of information security may be expected to be more articulate about the topic than others in the organization and often must withstand a higher degree of scrutiny when it comes to ethics. The foundations and framework of ethics include normative, 
meta ethics, descriptive, applied, and deontological ethics. From the fairly well defined and agreed upon ethical frameworks come a series of ethical standards such as the utilitarian approach, rights approach, fairness or justice approach, note that was founded on the work of Aristotle and other Greek philosophers, common good approach, and virtue approach. Here you see the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics as prescribed by the Computer Ethics Institute. Number one, use a, you shall not use a computer to harm other people. And specifically, thou shalt always use a computer in ways that ensure consideration and respect for fellow humans. Proper ethical and legal training is vital to creating an informed, well-prepared, and low-risk system user. Think back to our SATA training. It is the responsibility of InfoSec personnel to do everything in their power to deter unethical and illegal acts, using policy, education, and training, and technology as controls to protect information. However, it's generally agreed that laws and policies and their associated penalties only deter if three conditions are present. Fear of penalty, probability of being caught, and probability of penalty being administered. Professional organizations and their codes of conduct. Codes of ethics can have a positive effect on an individual's judgment regarding computer use. The Association of Computer Machinery, or ACM's, Code of Ethics requires members to perform their duties in a manner befitting an ethical computing professional. The International Information Systems Security Certification Consortium, Incorporated, or ISC Squared, is primarily designed for information security professionals. SAMS, founded in 1989, is a professional research and education cooperative. They focus on the GIAC Code of Ethics. ISACA membership comprises both technical and managerial professionals. It requires many of the same high standards for ethical performance as the other organizations and certifications. Members and ISACA certification holders are required to support the implementation and encourage compliance with appropriate standard procedures and controls, perform their duties with objectivity, due diligence, and professional care, and serve in the interest of stakeholders. They're required to maintain the privacy and confidentiality of information, and to maintain competency in their respective fields. They also need to inform appropriate parties of the results of work performed as well as support the professional education of stakeholders. The Information System Security Association, as a professional association, has a primary mission to bring together qualified practitioners of information security for information exchange and educational development. They provide conferences, meetings, publications, and information resources to promote information security awareness and education. Organizational liability and the need for counsel. What if an organization does not behave ethically? Due diligence requires that organizations make a valid and ongoing effort to protect others. Every FBI field office has established an InfraGuard chapter and collaborates with public and private organizations and the academic community to share information about attacks, vulnerabilities, and threats. The NSA is responsible for signal intelligence and information system security. In addition to its well-known mission to protect key members of the U.S. government, the Secret Service is also charged with the detection and arrest of any person committing a U.S. federal offense relating to computer fraud as well as false identification crimes. In summary, laws are formally adopted rules for acceptable behavior in modern society. Remember the key difference between laws and ethics is that laws bear a sanction a governing authority and ethics do not. Remember US copyright law extends intellectual property rights to the published word, 
including electronic publication. And last, remember that there's multiple organizations out there who band together to have a code of ethics that their members will follow. And there's a number of key federal agencies that are charged with our protection and the protection of information resources. Thank you for listening to this presentation. There's one more for this week. Please use this information and that in the next presentation to complete your discussions and requirements. Have a great day.